um, thank you for having me here. Uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about that because I'm really here to make public what I've done during the last months and connecting with other people who might be interested in that. So, um, I'm professor for media informatics at uh, the HTV Berlin. Uh, and my handle is Dr. Blinken almost everywhere, it was free. So the, <laughs> uh, the HTV, Hochschule für Technik und Wirtschaft Berlin, is the biggest university for applied sciences in Berlin. We have 13,000 students and uh, 70 pro uh, bachelor's and master's programs of study. And I just realized that I should mention we have a women's only computer science program and maybe the two students I met who are there raise their hands if anyone has questions about that, if that's okay. Um, I'm unfortunately not in that program. I'm in media informatics, but uh, I know the people running the program. So we mainly have programs in engineering and business, but also a fifth of the programs and or students are in computer science. We have two campuses, uh, one in Karlshorst, uh, this one, and one located next to the Spree in Oberschöneweide, where I'm luckily to work, uh, be lucky enough to work, which is in the southeast of Berlin, just like there. So this is just a bit of background where I'm from, where I work. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about my experience of changing my name before my legal name change um, at my workplace at the university. Um, and as not all of you might be familiar with gender terms, I dug out this nice uh, picture here um, to basically just, so, so I'm a transgender butch and uh, I had a male gender expression all my life. And this is to point out that gender identity and gender expression, biological sex, and whom a person is attracted to are, are different things. So gender identity um, is something that is in your head and gender expression is like if you express yourself more masculine or feminine. And attraction and biological sex are different things altogether. And also uh, within the gender community or in general there's a notion of that maybe there, there or there are, I'm, I'm convinced that there are more than two genders. So uh, there are people identifying as non-binary or gender queer, because binaries are for computers mainly. Um, and also, like uh, I, I attended a workshop uh, at Trick in Berlin and uh, learned that, or. or someone put up this nice graphic there, which I redraw this morning. So um, the, the notion of non-binary is that apart from the idea that you have two genders, A and B, and there are people clearly within that one category and then the other, that they're, and that trans, trans identities are something where one person decides, well, I want to be over there and transition at some point in their lives over there. There might be other things, like someone deciding to walk in that direction then maybe do other things and then end up at an identity which is on the same gender or even end up in an identity which doesn't match any of these two categories altogether. Just, so this is just to point out there's more than two genders and uh, yeah, more than just being male and female. So I, I said I'm, I, I ident identified male all my life um, and I used male names and pronouns on my private name for more than 15 years. And in the earlier talk I realized one reason I didn't do that at work was really a political reason. I'm, uh, I made it through computer science as a woman or being female identified until being a professor and I'm like, now I'm there, one of the few professors, female professors we have there, I have to stay female, right? <laughs> uh, but I'm not, I'm really not. So I decided that I wanted to change that and the legal situation in Germany is um, that you have to go to court to, um, to get your name and legal gender changed. Um, this is based on the Transsexuellen Gesetz, which is pretty old, it's from 1980. And you have to get two psychological expertises uh, before you're able to do that. So you have to get to two Nervenärzten, one of them is actually calling herself that, 
uh, and they have to approve that you're really transsexual and really can take the great step of having your name changed. Since uh, 2011, no physical changes are mandatory anymore um, because the Federal Constitutional Court ruled that they contradict the right to physical integrity. So uh, I decided um, to go ahead and change my name uh, before the legal name change. And I just realized I have to skip a couple of slides. So, so I went ahead and uh, just changed my personal website. First, I just removed the name and put a B there. And then I finally changed it to Barnum, which already was quite empowering. And then I sent out an email to all my colleagues. And, um, and a little bit later, I put up a note on my website um, telling everyone that I, um, that I um, use male pronouns and want to address as, uh, via gender neutral address uh, uh, or, or uh, a male form. And this actually went very smoothly. Like, mo no, all my colleagues have been great about that, that the administration is being great about that. And, um, and, uh, and only two people actually asked me things about that. So that was, that was great. But um, my dead name kept being used in the university infrastructure, mainly uh, in those three systems, which is uh, the course information system and the e-learning platform and the wiki, which of course I use every day and uh, to, uh, to present stuff and um, uh, communicate with students. So my dead name would be shown there everywhere. And this would also be a problem for, or, or an issue for trans students, those three systems. And their uh, issue um, unique to me as a professor is that, of course, the official university website would publish my dead name together with my other colleagues. Um, so the dead name is not only constantly show, shown to students, but also um, made public um, over the website which results in Google hits with my old name and is shown like on presentations. If I log into the computer in the laboratory, my old name would be shown. So I talked to um, uh, the boss of our, our IT infrastructure of operations and um, well, they told me, well, we can't really change that because your name is in their personal management system would be in a similar system for student and everything gets pushed into a system with a nice name, Identity Management System. So the identities are managed there, uh, which is actually a Microsoft Active Directory. And all the other systems uh, would get the, um, the information from there via LDAP. Um, and for students, for me, that would mean if, if I changed my name there, I would get my pay slips uh, in a name that's not yet legally approved, which might lead to problems somewhere else, and for students it would be the same thing. Uh, it would, for instance, be printed on this uh, Studierendenausweis, and I just realized this week that we have this wonderful posters up there with a Max Mustermann with painted fingernails. I love that. <laughs> um, so, so while everyone was really supportive of me changing the name, not asking strange questions, like having the name shown everywhere to students and to me every day it was really a drain of energy. And, uh, but I also understand I've worked in infrastructure, I actually work there, this is the Amadeus Data Center, um, that it's not easy to change things in the big organizational infrastructure. And, and it's a longer process. So first I've tried to find workarounds I used other infrastructure like GitHub. Um, I moved more and more stuff to my personal web page, which I can totally control. It's a, it's a GitHub page mirrored on the university website. I even found a way to um, make my dead name disappear from emails I sent. Took me a while to find that. And I removed information from the uh, official website. So I'm, I'm uh, taking care of internships in our program. And I just removed it because I didn't want to present something to students with my old name there. So still, this takes a lot of energy. 
And I even considered either talking to human resources to just change the name and uh, take care of the changes otherwise, or even uh, create a fake uh, associate lecture account, which is a third way to get data into the identity management system. Um, but then I decided I really should address this issue uh, at organizational level, and I've worked in DevOps, so I know that that uh, it's it's a cultural thing, like getting development and operations work together, and really um, um, making changes possible, like in a very shielded, secure uh, infrastructure. By the way, the uh, Amadeus Data Center, all flight bookings for the last 40 years have happened there, and rarely anyone know knows that. Um, so I tried to find Alice, um, and I talked to, uh, I connected with a trans student, um, and then I contacted operations again, because I, um, or, or IT infrastructure, um, to convince them that if not for me, I could like sit through the next six months with my old name being shown there and then eventually have a change. But it's a greater issue, like uh, we should really make that available to students uh, that they can use their, changing, uh, their, their chosen name. And in fact, there has been an, um, uh, a letter to all Berlin universities, like I started talking to people and one of my colleagues dug that out, asking all Berlin University to use chosen names before a legal change or even without a legal change internally. And there's also an expertise from the Anti-Diskriminierungsstelle des Bundes um, uh, clarifying that it's not a legal problem to do so. And the funny thing is, so I started talking to people and what happened without me knowing was that uh, the head of IT operations um, also uh, talked to the counselor and just when I try to put together those slides and make nice screenshots of my dead name. They, they literally changed it an hour earlier. <laughs> so um, operations found a way uh, to do that. So um, I conclude with some thoughts about infrastructure. Um, one thing is that infrastructure should um, support chosen and nicknames, not only for trans students, but there are a lot of uh, more students that either use nicknames or don't want to use their given names or use shorter versions of very long names. Um, so infrastructure should support that. Also, email aliases and names should be more flexible currently. So for instance, we have a lot of Indonesian students and they have just an assortment of names and it's not clear which is, or, or they don't have the concept of first and last of, or given and family name. And Spanish names have, uh, they have two last names and if, uh, but the first last name, so that it's usually the third name and four names in a row would be the main last name so they can't really use email aliases at our university. And last, not least, I want to uh, point out that using chosen names is legal um, because if, if we, even if we put certificates in chosen names, we're not, we're not, um, um, it's not fraud because we're not uh, saying this, uh, it's not about the name what we're saying, so we can really do that. And uh, again, it's important to find allies. Um, so this is work in progress, really. Like uh, AlterConf really pushed me to push that a bit more forward and to reflect about that. Um, so currently, I'm talking uh, with the other Frauenbeauftragten, um, like women's representatives at the uh, university, that they should uh, feel responsible for these topics as well, because um, it's a discrimination based on gender. Uh, and it's also, universities are very hierarchical um, institutions, so it's important to find allies in the administration and in the hierarchy. And I um, also reach out to other universities and, and the student I'm, I'm connected with reach out to other universities and see how they are doing. And well, like with the leap forward that just happened two days ago, um, I, 
I saw the slide from the official university uh, uh, um, presentation, and it says innovative and diverse. And I, I thought, yeah, yeah, this is like the claim. Is this five minutes? Oh, then I, because it's showing me zero. Okay. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I was confused why I'm running out of time. Okay. So I'm almost finished, yeah. Um, and so, but right now it seems like we're going to, or we have a good chance to be the first Berlin University uh, finding a good solution for that using chosen names uh, within the administration. Um, yeah, so thank you for listening. And uh, I'm, I put my website a couple of times up here. I'm easily to Google and even uh, Google, it took a day until Google didn't show my dad name anymore. That was cool too. And uh, I can be found at Dr. Blinken also. Thank you.